Well, welcome back, guys, to yet another episode of the Data Chronicles. Obviously, you guys know who I am. My name is Ed. And with me today, guys, I'm very excited for this because not only do I have the president and GM of the Idaho Falls, Idaho Falls Chuckers, but you are also the president of a little hockey team as well, my friend. Yeah, uh, what, a, what an exciting time for us here in Idaho Falls. <laughs> right. I mean, I was just saying, I was like, I was doing my research and I'm like, Man, this is some great stuff. I love this. Kevin, how are you today, my friend? Oh, I'm doing great. Uh, baseball will be here. Well, our team will be getting here in about three weeks to start their preseason mini camp. And our first game will be here against the Boise Hawks on May 20th. We're doing an exhibition game about a week before our home opener. Ah, oh, that's exciting. I love, I love baseball. I love, especially, you know, like the beginning of spring, you know, you're doing the, the, uh, the, the, the pre this, I call it spring season, right? Like, you know, just all of that, the exhibition and all that. And it's just like, Oh, oh we are here. We are finally here. We are except for it snowed again last night. So uh, we are supposed to have high school baseball in our field today, but there is snow on the ground. That's a little hard for it uh, to play, especially, you know, with this little snow on the ground been a crazy spring but it's going to come around it always does gotcha so so um let's get let's get started here with you i want to i want to get to know you first of all um your trajectory right you are from upper new york so i wanted to get to know a little bit about you and then we'll talk about the chuckers how's that sound that sounds great should i just tell you yeah, a little go bit? for it i'm gonna let leave the the yeah. floor open for you my friend sure. I went to, uh, I grew up in a little town in Waddington, New York, right on the Canadian border. And we were Expos fans growing up, of course, because Jerry Park and then the uh, Exhibition uh, Montreal Expos were just down the road. But anyway, I, I ended up going to a college in uh, SUNY, Brockport. And then coming out of that, I secured an internship with the uh, AAA Rochester Red Wings in 1984 and became a full-time member of their staff. Uh, worked with them through the... Uh, 1991 season and that fall uh we had a change uh with our general manager at that time i was the head of public relations and did a lot of corporate sales uh with the changeover i i decided to look around and see what was out there so i ended up moving to the tidewater tides uh worked for the late uh, dave rosenfield they were the tides back in the old uh, military uh park uh, and that was a year before they built a new one down there in the waterfront. That was being built while I was there. And then uh, in, oh, I guess it would have been the fall of 1992, my old boss, who was later working for a team in uh, Colorado Springs, called me and said, I have an opportunity for you to become a general manager if you're interested in taking a move, uh, making a move to Idaho Falls, Idaho. So after coming out here and checking it out for three or four days, I said, let's give this a try convinced my wife who uh, we were only dating at the time that she should move with me and she we got married and moved on out here <laughs> that was a nice grace so we've been doing this for 30 years in fact she was our director of finance she retired last friday oh good for her congratulations yeah how about that yeah so i was watching a an interview that you did and i was saw it on through minor league baseball is that the way that you got connected through the rochester red wings was by someone asking you one question yes they did it was my advisor at college and all he said to me and i was getting ready ready to essentially become a phys ed teacher and he said one thing he said what are you passionate about and i said baseball i love baseball and it just happened the uh, that was my answer. And he said, well, that's interesting. There's a team right down the road. The Rochester Red Wings said, just uh, uh, put in to see if there was anyone in our program interested in a, doing an internship. So he set me up with an interview and I hit it off, I hit it off with the GMs. They have co-GMs at the time, mm -hmm. uh, Bob Gone and Bill Trelecki. And I sat there between the two of them and they grilled me. And I said, listen, they asked, started asking me questions about baseball operations. And I said, the only thing I learned in SUNY Brockport was how to teach phys ed. That was it. They said, all right, show up and we'll give it a try. And I've been doing it ever since. The bug. You got bit by the bug and then that was it, huh? <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. But, you know, I find out that uh, we bring in interns every year and some of them, they love it. This is what they want to do. 
Others immediately say this is a lot of work for virtually no money. And, uh, you know, they want to they want to seek something that maybe provides a little bit more financial security up front. Uh, baseball, you've got to pay your dues. I was just going to say, it's like, if you want to stick around in minor league baseball, you got to only pay your dues, right? You start as an intern. And then not only that, you're wearing multiple, multiple hats. Oh, my gosh. The hours are incredible. Right. Uh, I mean, you could be sales and then also be pulling the tarp the, on game day. Well, interesting you say that. Uh, I currently do not have a groundskeeper. So yesterday, because our ballpark is city owned and there is high school baseball played here, uh, I was dragging our infield yesterday at about 1.30 in the afternoon for a high school. <laughs> My and God. Out that and raking out the corners, uh, put down a chalk line and they're ready to go. That is wild. That's crazy. It, 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 it goes to speak on what it is, right? Minor league baseball. Oh, yeah. You know, back when I worked in Rochester, uh, I lived with uh, the, the Dana and Daryl Brown were the, were the groundskeepers in Rochester. They were identical twins, and I shared a house with them. And, of course, we became great friends. But I learned a little bit about groundskeeping and how important it is as part of an operations thing. So, um I enjoy going out in the field, especially when it's a beautiful day out there. It's much better than sitting in the office. And in fact, when we had uh, uh, shut down 2020 with COVID, um, I had to furlough my entire staff. So that year I was the head groundskeeper and uh, I enjoyed it. I really loved it. I think if I retire, I'll become a groundskeeper. You know what? That, that's a great job, right? Just you're hanging out outside. Yep. I'll walk up to the end of the, or walk up to the top of the grandstand, just look out over the field. There's sometimes I'll just sit up there and look at the field and oh. uh, you know, take some pride in it. That's amazing. I love that. I love that. Uh, okay. So uh, another part of the uh, interview that I was uh, listening to is that stats have changed a little bit since you started with Rochester, right? You know, between oh. then and now. Uh, yeah. See, I'm not a stats guy. I like your stats. I like a bats, runs, hits, doubles, triples, homers, RBIs, walks, strikeouts, stolen base, caught, steal, and batting average. That's what, that's what a line score is supposed to look like. Or, uh, you know, uh, um, but, uh, you know, the rest of these things, I personally don't care about, you know, whips and, you know. Uh, yeah. Everything. It's just not me. I'm old school. Listen, I, analytics are so important to the game now. I'm not going to discredit that because people say, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just saying for me as a casual fan, when I'm not out here, just working ops uh, as a casual fan, you know, the big ones, homers, RBIs, batting average. It's, I'm good it's, that. Right. It's funny you say that because I'm the same way. I'm like, listen, I get it. There's, there's a, t there's a place for all those analytics for all those fans that I love it. Me personally, I simple, give me the simple stats. And then I also look at, uh, how the player is acting, reacting, you know, the pitcher and all of that. I, I like to watch the players and see how they move and all that. That's how I know how things are going in the game. Sure. Sure. But it's pretty easy. I mean, if you, if you're watching a ball game on TV, they're still going to show, you know, home runs, RBIs, batting average. I mean, that's, that's really what you need. Yep. Wins, you know, wins, loss, ERA saves, strikeouts. That Exactly. That's it. You don't need much else after that. More than that. <laughs> uh, okay. So you decided to move to Idaho Falls and you're, you're, you're now GM of the Chuckers and all that. Uh, you know, what was your first thought when you said, hey, you know, you are going to be working for a team called the Chuckers and it happens to be a, a bird? Well, you know, when I first got here, we were the Idaho Falls Gems. That's right. Yep. In uh, 1993, I got here. We were called the Gems, and the team had just come off just a horrendous year, not only win-loss wise, but attendance had really dropped off. And uh, one of the guys who I first met when I got here was our longtime radio broadcaster, a guy who's since passed away, a guy named Jim Garsho. And I said, "Jim, tell me, tell me what's going on with? Uh, do you see problems with this operation? What's the problem?" They go, "Well, first of all, you're an, you're an, you're an affiliate of the Atlanta Braves." who at that particular time had a huge following out here because if you, if you had TV, it was cable TV, and you were probably watching Braves on TBS. So our Braves affiliate, uh, my predecessor, dumped the name at uh, Idaho Falls Braves and, and took on the name Gems. 
and it was a terrible logo gems because Idaho is a gem state, I guess, but people didn't even know who the gems were. They didn't do a good job marketing it. So the first thing I did was I called a press conference and I, and I said, the Braves are back. Uh, we are the Idaho Falls Braves and forget the uh, gems fiasco of 1992. And boy, the fans uh, support came right back around. And we turned uh, a 1992 season that was a financial loser into a, a <laughs> final uh, win in 1993. And uh, up until uh, COVID year of 2020, we were profitable every year uh, that me and my staff ran the team here. That's every awesome. Yeah, I don't see the gem thing. I'll be honest with you. I, I don't see, you know, gems. I get it. You know, like you said, gem state or, you know, how other states have their own, you know, like Ohio, the heart of it all. You're not going to call the Cleveland Hearts or anything like that. Yeah, and the logo just had a red. It was a diamond in red. And it, it just, it didn't say, it didn't say baseball. didn't say who, we're, who we are, but we corrected that wrong. And uh, we, we got on track and uh, the trajectory for minor league baseball right up through 2019 was incredible. That's a, I love it. So, so let me ask you right now, you're, you're, you were affiliated and then obviously the, the news came out that you guys were no longer going to be affiliated. How was that support uh, in the town um, when all of that happened? Like, you know, how did you guys handle all of that? Well, you know, we got into the fall and it was really up to the owners of the teams to sit down and say, OK, where do we go from here? Um, they knew that uh, things were probably collapsing with the uh, Appy League and, uh, and the New York Penn League. But the ownership group within the Pioneer League stuck together and said, we think that we need to be remain professional baseball. We're just going to have to pay these guys ourselves and we're going to have to go the independent route. And let's make it work. And everyone stuck together. We made it work. Um, you know, I, I can't speak for what happened in the Appy and New York Penn League, but our league stuck it out and every team continues to remain viable. Although profitability has taken a big hit. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something we all know because, you know, we had such a great deal with uh, our affiliated uh, system where, players and coaches and trainers all their salaries were paid for but not just that a lot of the travel expenses hotels meal money that's a big thing I spend fifty thousand dollars a year just on meal money that was covered before so if you add all that up uh, we did all take a really big hit to our bottom line but uh, not so much though that we're all we're, we're disappearing we're still here and I love it. I, you know, obviously you guys are also adding, you know, a couple of teams in, you know, since then, right. The you know, the yeah, Grand Junction yeah. to Jackalopes. Yeah. You know? Well, and, the Grand Junction was a team that was originally in, um, uh, Orem. They were the Orem yeah. Apples. I'm sorry. I, I, let me get this. Let me get this straight. Uh, Orem became the, uh, Northern Colorado, uh, team. Owls. Yep. Owls. Uh, Grand Junction was a part of the league. They were the Grand Junction Rockies. They just rebranded as the Jackalopes this last off season. But we were at eight teams uh, where we picked up the teams was uh, the expansion team. And then uh, in Kalispell, uh, the Glacier Ridge Riders. Range Riders, yeah. Range Riders, I'm sorry, I apologize, I'm getting old. And of course, uh, Boise Hawks, uh, they kind of got left out of the uh, realignment process when they were a member of the Northwest League. Northwest League went from eight down to six teams, and they got lopped off. Uh, I think geographically they were so far out from the rest of that Northwest League, and it made so much sense for them geographically to join the Pioneer League, which they did, and they're seeing good success over there. I love me personally, I've grown since ever since COVID, I've grown to have a huge amount of appreciation for the independent leagues for, you know, teams like the professional leagues, like you guys are just because you guys have to do not only, you know, your job now is not only baseball ops, but you have to, you know, going through the process of signing players. And like you said, head groundskeeper and all that. So there's a lot more going on than just um, having a team sent to you, a coaching staff sent to you by the major league club. Oh my gosh, it was so easy. And now, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm a month out and I don't have a clubhouse manager. If I was, if I didn't have a clubhouse manager, I'd, I'd call the Kansas City Royals and say, 
hey, you must have some guys working down your spring training complex that don't want to work in Arizona heat all summer. Uh, do you have somebody down there that can come on up and be our clubby? And they've sent guys up here before that have done a great job for us. So that's, that's, you know, you've got the support, not just the financial support, but support in so many other ways. You know, we're, the, uh, I remember when we were at the Padres, they were, they were corporate sp uh, sponsors of ours. They took some of our community outreach type programs and put dollars behind it and actually did sponsorship with us back in the day. And that was wonderful. Mm -hmm. What a great trip we had with them. The Royals were great. Uh, I love the Padres. Those guys were great. We we're at Padres from uh, 95 through 2003. Heck yeah. I mean, why not? Like, you know, that helps. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. It helps a little bit uh, here and there. Yeah. But I, I miss those relationships I had with the, you know, the, the big league people. I miss the uh, going to the baseball winter meetings. I feel like you're part of something that's much bigger than our operation. Um, but, uh, you know, you, at this point, we accomplish what we can do, and that's to stay in business and keep our fan base happy and still put a good product on the field. I was just going to say, like, I mean, the support has not left at all. Like, I mean, if anything, you know, it's stronger now because of they know that if they don't support, you know, the team could be gone. And because of there is no financial backing or actual backing from a major league team. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you do what you can to offset these added expenses. For example, the, one of the first things we did was knew that we had to find ways to generate more money. And it, it wasn't just going to come from raising prices on everything. So we went from a 76 game schedule to a 96 game schedule. Picking up 10 extra home games each year made a big difference for us. A huge help. Yeah. And then you prices up a, a little bit as you see fit. But minor league baseball even at the independent uh, level, is still so affordable. Our most expensive ticket here is $16. You know, and I get it. Listen, I understand that like with inflation one and, and then two, you know, you have to raise prices. I, I, you know, I'm one that if you see behind me, I will buy a hat from a team just because I know that that hat will make a much bigger difference in the minor leagues than it does in the major leagues. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, uh, my gosh, you, you mentioned hockey uh, before. Of course, now we run the uh, Junior A hockey team, the Idaho Falls Spud Kings. Yep. Uh, that, that brand, we got, well, almost laughed at when we first came out with it and, and showed everyone our new mark, and we absolutely killed it. I would be surprised if there's any Junior A hockey team in the country that outdrew us or drew, sold more merchandise. First of Just, all, I, I love the name. I, I, love, I absolutely love the name Spud Kings. It's hilarious. Well, I know see. when we started, people were like, no, you're not going to be the Spud Kings, it's too hokey, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, the more we talked to our partners at Brandios who helped us come up with this brand, we said, you know, when when you're in any state other than Idaho in the country and somebody says Idaho, what do you think of? You think of potatoes. So why why wouldn't we take a brand that says who we really are? Yeah. Why we not? Are the, we are the Spud Kings. And I love it. I, the colors, the yellow, the red are amazing. I was just going to talk about that. Like I was just going to transition here. Cause like, right. You are, you, you're, you handle the, the baseball on during the summer, but during the winter you're working with the hockey team, my friend, you got a full schedule. You got a full plate. Oh, we do. I, you know, usually in the fall, that's where we all get to take a little bit of a, a time off, take a breather, relax. Um, take some vacation but now we'll go right from the end of baseball season right into hockey season so it hasn't killed me yet ed but uh you know we'll see <laughs> but we have a young a young staff that's really really good at what they do and they work tirelessly and we had just an incredible inaugural season for spud kings hockey 24 home games we sold out 22 of the 24 over that's 4, amazing yeah, over 4,000 fans Per game. That's that's great, and uh, and the fact that like you know <laughs> I'm watching one of the videos right now, right, and it shows the fans throwing potatoes on the ice. That's yeah, great. Yeah. That was a promotional thing we did with Teton Toyota. We called it the Tater Toss, where those were, those are foam uh, potatoes. They were all numbered, and we sold those. And if whoever's closest to the target would win five hundred dollars. But it was a huge fundraiser we did, and uh, every time we did it. They'd identify a local uh, nonprofit to benefit, and I think they raised helped uh, raise about twenty five thousand dollars throughout our community 
just by doing the tater toss and select dates this summer or this last last winter. So it was great. Let me ask you. Tell you know, obviously you 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 run junior hockey, you run the baseball team. Uh, so, what are in in your opinion? What are some of the the similarities and differences between running those two clubs? Well, because we're independent baseball and we're junior A hockey, my coaching staff is in charge of all the recruiting. Very, very similar uh, differences. Junior A hockey, they're not paid. Uh, they're, they're trying to get looks from college scouts. Minor league independent baseball, they're paid, trying to get looks from major league teams to sign them to a minor league contract so they can keep the dream alive. Uh, marketing is almost identical. Uh, we, we sold the same kind of promotions. A little bit different. Hockey promotions can be different on ice versus, you know, baseball. You know, kids run the bases kind of stuff. But there's a lot of similar similarities there. Our price and structure is very comparable. Um, but uh, you know, Idaho, there's a lot to do in the summer. You got 50 home games, so the the per per game attendance is quite a bit less for baseball because people are, you know, you got a short summer. They're out fishing and hunting and camping and traveling and hockey in J Idaho in January, February, not much to do. You got Friday, Saturday games. Let's go to a Spud Kings game and you sell it out. It's a lot easier to run hockey right now than it is baseball. Also in hockey, there's a se whole separate staff that runs the arena. Mm -hmm. We lease agreement, but when we go over there, the, the staff with the arena takes care of clean up ushers uh, ticket takers security all that my small staff and i do all that at games so if we have a saturday baseball game my staff and i are here at nine in the morning for a seven o'clock game if there's a hockey game on saturday at 7 p.m my staff and i might not show up to 5 30 because there's a whole nother staff that takes care of all the building operations for us so for that reason hockey is 10 times easier than baseball the hours are significantly less. And uh, yeah, and we have all that other support staff over there to get it done. Interesting. That's a, that's a very good way of looking at it. It's like, yeah, yeah. If I'm going to buy a hockey a team. I'm going to buy a hockey team because it's a whole lot easier to yeah. run. But, you know, not not all junior hockey teams uh, yeah. are as fortunate as we are. You know, we're in a beautiful $64 million facility with 4,000 seats. A lot of junior eight teams are out there in community ice rinks drawing 500 fans a game. So it's, it's just, uh, you know, if you're fortunate enough to have the right, the right community support, but also the right building. I was going to say, it's like, it also helps that you are the, you know, the big boys in town as well. Right. You know, like, well, yeah. you know, having run minor league baseball for 30 years here, I think uh, it was important for this first year to have all the connections that we did. Our biggest sponsors for the hockey team, we already had those relationships with the baseball people. And I think we knew what our fans were expecting in terms of pricing. So we had to keep that affordable for everything. We didn't try and blow it out of the water. And, you know, if anything, people are going, wow, your tickets are under, maybe perhaps underpriced. But minor league baseball's tickets have always been underpriced. So I, I think it's important that, you know, we're, we're handling both. So we're not blowing the market. We're not ruining the market in any way. No. And you want to make sure that you keep your fan base. Cause like, all right, fine. Let's raise the prices. Yeah. What's going to happen then after that there, nobody's going to be happy. Nobody's going to come. So at that point, all right, you just made a little bit of profit early on, but where's the rest yeah. of the profit going to come from after that? Oh yeah. And you want to be able to grow both programs and you're going back to the same sponsors. So that sponsor that's been supporting baseball for the last 20 years, we're now asking them to support baseball and hockey. So you don't want to give them such a big hockey sponsorship that they can't afford the baseball sponsorship. So you got to find balance there. I think we've done a really good job of that. Um, getting back to baseball. Let me ask you, because uh, you said that you're a professional, right? Your players are paid. Um, how is, what is, how is the process of recruiting these players? Where do you get these players from? Well, again, I, I rely on our, our manager yeah. and our coach. Staff. You know, Dave Clark is our manager. He's got, uh, he played in the big leagues for what, nine years. Uh, uh, he was a hitting coach for the Detroit Tigers for seven years. Um, I think he's also coached at major league level for the Houston Astros, et cetera. So, 
here's a guy that's got a lot of big league uh, connections. Uh, it's been around Major League Baseball for a lot of years. He's bringing in uh, players. It's all up to him. I, I trust him to sign the guys and get them here for the start of the season. Bob Malacki, our pitching coach, also about eight, nine years in the big leagues, so first round pick from the Baltimore Orioles back in the 1980s. In fact, when uh, our manager the last two years, Billy Gardner, he's, he just got uh, a job with the Marlins, mm-hmm. running their team in Beloit. So we lost Gardy after two years because he got, he got back into affiliated baseball. Good for him. But when uh, we, we agreed to terms with him two years ago to be our manager, he said, I'm thinking about a pitching coach named Bob Malacky. And the first thing I said is, Bob Malacky. I knew Bob Malacky back in 1998 when I worked for the Rochester Red Wings. And he was a, a pitcher for the, uh, the, the Royals sign at the end of the first round in uh, 88. And uh, yeah, he won, I think, 14 years or 14 games for us in Rochester in 98. Went on to have a pretty good big league career. I think he won about 40 big league ball games. So he, he came back, a guy I've known since the 1980s. And of course, local uh, celebrity Billy Butler, Country Breakfast, lives in Idaho Falls now, played his first year minor league baseball for the uh, 2004 Idaho Falls Chuckers, our first year as the Chuckers. Uh, he was a, a first round pick out of high school, out of uh, Jacksonville, Florida, when he was here as a 17 year old. He met a girl, they, they started dating, and uh, he lives here with them. Her now, they're married, of course, and have, have three daughters. He's our hitting coach. That's amazing. So, yeah. Very he was fortunate. a pretty good hitter. He was a pretty good yeah. hitter in the majors. Yeah, big country, uh, country breakfast. Could, uh, he could hit a baseball. You know, he was a silver slugger. He was an MLB all-star. I was just I was just so bummed for him because, you know, he was on the 2014 team that lost Game 7 of the World Series to the Giants, but he did not uh, come back for the 2015 season when they won the World Series ring. And the Royals were so nice, they presented me with a World Series ring. I'm not wearing it right now. But when Billy's around, I'm wearing it. I always flash it in front of him just to give him a hard time because (laughs) I think the thing that he's so bummed about is he didn't get the World Series ring from the Royals from 15 because he had already left to sign. He signed a three-year contract with the Oakland A's. Yeah, That's where he he moved to for the 15 season, but, uh, you know, Billy is the ultimate, uh, ball buster and, and I love him. So. That's amazing. That's a really good, uh, coaching staff you got there. Yep. Yep. Guys with a lot of big leagues experience, a lot of contacts, a lot of knowledge, a lot of people, all of them well-respected in the game. So, uh, when you have those guys out recruiting for you, it makes it pretty easy. You just sit back and enjoy the show. Yep. I well, just, at least go rake the field, but while they're co- while yeah. they're coaching, and then come off the field and enjoy a enjoy a hot dog and mingle with the fans. Maybe go around and shake a few hands and some sweets and uh, and watch a little baseball. And there's nothing better than that, my friend. There's absolutely nothing better than that. Enjoy the fruits of the labor. Get, love it, love it. All right, uh, is there anything that I have not asked you or anything like that um, that we haven't mentioned on this podcast so far? Oh, gosh. Um, I think we've talked about everything. Uh, you know, it's uh, what a great run it's been. You know, I got people my age who are all retiring now wondering how much longer I'm, I'm going to do this. And, and my answer to that is, uh, why would I give up something that I love? But I, I will tell you this, like the beginning of the beginning of the season, we've got to stretch. We're home nine nights out of out of ten. Oof. And you might see me leave the ballpark early on some of those nights where that's something I would never used to do. And I'd grind it from 9 a.m. till 11 p.m. Um, you know, fortunately, we'll be able to get out of here earlier this year. The Pioneer League is using the pitch clocks. And uh, so much like Major League Baseball, we hope to see a good 30 to 40 minute de- keep decrease in game time. Last year it was brutally long. There's so many nights we were finishing we start a game at 7.05 and the game would be wrapping up 10.30, 10.40. Wow. And that's just too long, uh, especially when you're trying to grow this game with families with young kids. You know they're leaving at the end of the sixth because it's already nine, you know, 9.15, 9.30, and you still got a third of a baseball game to play. So I think the pitch clock is going to be great for uh, helping us grow the game. 
It's funny you say that because I listen, I have a four year old daughter and we go to games. She loves going to game baseball games and everything. But it's like once you start getting to the eight thirty, nine o'clock, I, you know, my wife and we're looking at each other like, yeah, it's about that time. Cinderella time. My oh, yeah. daughter's about to start getting crazy. Yeah, either that or she's falling asleep on your lap. So it's yep. going to be one or other. Um, you know, I, I always thought all these changes were had to do with, you know, trying to attract people that don't really love the game. And why aren't we just good with retaining the fan base that we have? Because I'm a baseball traditionalist. I love the game. I don't think it should be changing so dramatically. But then again, the time of the game is a big change. 30 years ago, time of game was 230, 240. And all of a sudden it's become 315. That's a problem. You got to get it back to where, you know, the fans aren't going to lose interest. And so uh, keeping that pitch coming every 15 seconds is a great thing. I'm with you there. I, you know, honestly, I don't mind it at all. I thought I was going to have an issue with some of these rules. I really don't. I, I, I've, I've come around on those. So yeah, yeah me too. I agree. So uh, I got one last question. And then what I want to do afterwards is I want to ask you some random funny questions, what I call my famous, not so famous questions. Uh, but I want to talk merchandise, my friend. Um, obviously, you know, you guys have, you know, the name is very uh, famous with you guys. I actually have one of your hats uh, is right up there. Nice. It's, is the uh, for the Copa brand, the Madres. Oh, yeah. Um, so I have that one. Uh, but will you guys be bringing out some more dad hats uh, to your uh, website? Some more what? Dad hats like this. Oh, gr dad is in Grateful Dead. No, as in dad, well, as in D A D. Dad hats. Oh, dad hats. Yeah, you know we. I could, gosh, I'm sorry. I got you on a phone here. Ed. <laughs> we are going to. Oh uh, man, we we did some dad hats for hockey. We did a gold dad hat. Said Spud Kings across. As soon as we put them out in the racks, we sold a ton of them. So yeah, I mean, uh, as opposed to like the new era OC. Uh, you know, team caps. You're right. Uh, dad hats are, are are big, and we do have some here in stock. I'll have to uh, take a few pictures of what we've got, and I'll send them to you. Oh yeah, now we're talking because yeah, those are as you can tell. I only have a handful of them. Um, oh. So yeah, but the boy, those gold uh, those gold Spud King was once. I don't know how many times we had to reorder those. My gosh. I like it. Listen, I'm on your Spud Kings website right now. I'm not lying to you. And this brand is so good. When you have a, a potato right now with a big mustache, a hockey stick, and a crown on ice skates, come on. That's just great stuff right there. So I, I've had the mustache most of my life. And I get friends sending me texts. Like we, we announce the name. And everyone's saying green. Leave it to Green to create a sponsor logo, like a logo that looks like him. <laughs> Come on, man! I don't look like the Spud King. That's great, though. I, I love it. The Idaho one with the the, the hand, you know, yep. coming out of the ground. That's beautiful, beautiful. Uh, grown potato, yeah, it's coming out of the ground. It's growing. Uh, yeah, what a great mark that's turned out to be. And uh our gift shop right now is 50 percent uh we brought all of our merch from the arena over here and uh our gift shop's 50 percent uh hockey 50 percent baseball right now that's amazing love it i love that yep. synergy between the teams and i think that's great absolutely yeah uh, all right my friend are you ready i am bring it on okay so first question i'm gonna ask i ask everybody is when you go to the ballpark you're going to hang out you're watching a game as a fan uh, what's your food and drink of choice? Well, you know, we have all the usual ballpark fare, the burgers, the hot. We sell a lot more burgers than hots. We have a, a chicken sandwich called the Chucker Clucker, I recommend. <laughs> uh, you know, we do uh, we do the, the uh, deluxe nachos with the big baseball helmet. Those things we sell a ton of. You know, ice cream does really well. Uh, you know, we wouldn't be in business probably without beer. So that that's, uh, goes without saying. And, uh, but I think we offer a really nice mix, but, uh, you know, our signature sandwich is the chucker clucker. It's a, uh, it's a chicken sandwich. I recommend it, but, uh, yeah, we have a, a, I think we do a great job with our food and beverage here. And, uh, you know, I say, come out and sample it all if it's me, but I personally, I'm a burger, a hot dog guy. We also do pulled pork. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a really good sweet menu too, for the folks that are up in the club level. I love it. I think that's, that's a, sounds delicious. Why would I not try that? 
Of course. Uh, all right. If you could travel anywhere on Earth, you don't have any limitations whatsoever. Where would you go? You know, I'd probably go check out like uh, Australia, Tanzania, New Zealand. Uh, check out that area. Maybe go up and you know check out Bali and some places like that. I like it. Love it. Love it. Um, okay. Uh, in a fight between Superman and Batman, do you uh, do you think that Batman has a shot at winning that fight? Not a chance. Superman will kick his ass <laughs> so quickly. That's absolutely right. We're talking about a human versus a, a superhuman. Come You're on. absolutely right. Absolutely right. Um, okay. If you could be any type of plant or animal, what kind of animal or plant would you be? Oh, damn. Huh. I don't know. Horses are... <laughs> I, I like horses. it. You know, dogs get spoiled. So you got to like that. They can do whatever they want. You know, they go to the door, you let them out. They go to the door, if you let them back in. You feed them, you pet them, you groom them. Who's got it better than the, the dog? They got, they got it made. To be honest with you, I have a chihuahua, and I'm surprised that she has not barked at all this whole interview. So, yeah, you're right. They got it made. They're sleeping all day. She's sleeping by the sun right now. Yeah, it's an easy life. Oh, yeah. And, of course, it's a, you know, a well-groomed horse. Uh, they, they got it made, too. They got it, they got it good. <laughs> that's right uh okay let's take a look here uh what in your opinion okay um what song would you play if you were at a party what's your first this your song that you would request hmm that's a good one see i like bob dylan but not that's not a party it's not a party song, vibe yeah. Uh, my, but if my phone rings right now, it's going to play like a Rolling Stone by Bob Dylan. You know, I, I'm I'm a Tom Petty guy. I uh, love the Grateful Dead. Um, you know, a lot of my music's more of a mellow uh, stuff. I like the Neil Young, uh, you know, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, the Grateful Dead can always rock some pretty good tunes. Um, True. You know, there's 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 some good stuff out there. Oh, I like and I really like the... Uh, you know the Allman Brothers. Uh, that I like that sound. Nice, love it, love it. Okay, a couple more questions here. Uh, if the which which is one thing that you would change about your daily routine? I'd go to work later because I'm not a morning person. <laughs> I don't mind working late. I just hate being there at nine o'clock. So <laughs> I always tell everyone else gets here and strolling about nine twenty. Like, I yeah. Up the office, you know, open the uh, gate. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd rather start at 10 and work till six, than be here at nine and work to five. I'm the opposite. My wife is like you. She's like, do not wake me up in the morning. I yeah. am not a morning person. She's at night. Me, I'm the total opposite. Yep. Up yeah, at that's... five, five thirty in the morning every day. Yeah. But I, I won't mind working well into the evening. Just, uh, quiet that morning. I, I'd rather sit in my chair, um, drink coffee, um, you know, read the news and just chill. I like it. All right, my friend, last question here. If animals could talk, which animal do you think would be the rudest animal? Probably a cat. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, you, you can go and say a snake. I mean, I hate snakes. I would never touch a snake. I don't care if it's a harmless grass snake. I hate them damn things. But, you know, cats, uh, you know, they don't really seem to respect humans very much. I shouldn't say that. There's a lot of cat people out there. They're so independent, they don't give a, a rat's. They are a-holes. I'll say that. <laughs> I'll yeah. say it. Miserable animals out there. I mean, I wouldn't want to deal with a, a snake or a rat. Or, But, uh, yeah, I, get, I think that gives you an idea where I'm going. So I like it. I like it. Thank you so much for doing this, Kevin. This has been a lot of fun. I greatly appreciate you coming on. Um, sure. so where can people find uh, the team uh, and you on uh, social media? Well, uh, I have a couple guys from my staff that do a great job with social media. Um, you know, just pull up uh, Idol Falls Chuckers. You'll find, you know, Facebook, Instagram, all that. I got to tell you, Ed, I'm not much of a social media guy myself, <laughs> but I surround myself with young people that are really good at that. So I don't have to pretend I'm good at it because I'm not. But the good thing, they always update me on what's out there. So I'm, they're saying, hey, Green, did you see this? Did you see that? No, enlighten me. 
so I don't have to go digging for it. I'm not a social media guy. That's a good thing. At least they are the ones who take care of it, and you just sit yep. back and reap the benefits. But there was a time, you know, and what you'd say, like, social media, but how do you monetize that? Well, we're seeing that now. You can go out there and do some boosts on Facebook or whatnot for upcoming events, and you're actually seeing people, fans respond and showing up because they're seeing it on social media. Ten years ago, everyone was asking that question. It's great. People will chip, but will it be able to monetize it? Now the answer is yes. Absolutely, so my friend. Thank you so much, Kevin. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, like I said, I'll put all of the social media links for uh, you guys uh, for on my podcast episodes, so that way they can follow you guys. And then uh, we'll keep in touch because uh, definitely, uh, you know, the Pioneer League is one of the premier leagues out there right now when it comes to baseball. Well, thanks so much, Ed. I really enjoyed this. Thank you. You bet.